You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. <laughs> Macduff, so great a night I have not before this day seen. The wine doth flow, and general merriment has fallen upon the king's subjects. Peace must now rest upon this night and all our people. Take thou this letter that here I give to thee, the words and writing thou will recognize. Read wisely. <laughs> Husband, make no outward show as thou doth view this work, but do not give away all that I shall tell. This past evening, three weird spirits hath visited and proclaimed such deeds that we shall not fail to act upon. The royal court that thou hast now attended, we must leave. Fain an excuse that upon the following day one may, with understanding of the general people, make speed to England. Reveal thy intention only to those thou trusts. Do not, my lord, advance to all the world thy intentions, for suspicion doth breed about in such times, and with the passing of the clock are revealed. Once in England, make thy way with stealth and cunning to join old Seward and his mighty army. There he will instruct you further in this enterprise. Go with fortitude. Tell no one why thou must do this. My lady and wife. My lady! My lady! Come down from such a height! Air is cold! This morning's chill doth seep into my bones, and as the sun passes unseen over the grey sky, so age doth fall upon me with a leaden step. My lady, I say, come down upon these stone works, and warm thyself by the fire, constructed for the purpose. My lady, what is it that thou dost hope to see? The sky is but foreboding and conveys nothing of the gentle humour from which the summer sun doth warm the earth. Clouds do roar as in a tempest that speaks of some ill that shall creep upon this land and bring chaos and conflict to all. Oh, my lady, please. Nurse, thou art but superstitious. No significance may thou with certainty subscribe the actions of the weather. The sky doth not crack and roll because of all that man may do, or woman either. Do not seek meaning in the contours of the clouds, or say thou seest pictures or images of kings or queens that may, as some have said, gaze down upon kingdoms that they have left, their souls unable to pass to heaven. This is not so. Great events are not revealed across the sky, tragic times displayed and shown for all to see and mouth about. You should not speak this way, nurse. Thy duties lie not with portents written in the clouds. My lady should never dismiss the spirits that tend on the mortal thoughts of us all. We may turn away from those unseen, but when their signs are shown above our heads, only the foolish deny to see them. I observe the sky and... See no spirits to make themselves known to all. Signs are read by those that prepare to see them. And prithee, what sign should I, in your wisdom, see before my very eyes? That messenger, astride a black horse, riding as all the evils of the world were chasing him across the most desolate of lands. He doth bear the royal crest, his business with the lady of the house. Give him shelter and provide food. I would not have so good a messenger from the court conveyed upon an empty stomach. Be gone, and when he is ready, bring him before me. As my lady direct. Against myself, I do not believe the nurse spoke true. The heavens do not portend ill when lesser men die. Only the passing of the great and strong warrants such a display over our heads. Perhaps the strange visitor spoke some truth after all. My husband shall create a king, they said. If he shall create, my son may live to be one.
Warm thyself by the flame, sir, then impart thy news to all gathered here. Gentle host, for thy food and warmth I thank thee. Oh, that the news I have were of a happy note, but alas, it is not. Our royal king, Duncan, hath been slain. Those closest to him hath been accused of such a crime, and have already paid the price for their actions, their lives forfeit and dispatched. The nobles do hang their heads in sorrow, our people do cry to heaven, and even the very sky doth weep at such a loss. Hath not the king goodly sons to continue his line? My lady, the Prince of Cumberland, Malcolm, and his brother, Donald Bain, have already left the kingdom. Is it believed where they have gone? Gentle lady, Donald Bain to Ireland, Malcolm to the south, to England. England. So the rumour goes, my lady. What upon this murderous act could they hope to achieve? I know not, my host. Only this, so far as make up my message, was I ordered to impart to thee. So please you, I must now continue to the next castle to inform them of my sorry news. We thank you, sir, for all that thou hast spoken. We release thee from thy duty to this house. But kind sir, one question more. Who hath succeeded to the throne if no son of Duncan is now within this kingdom? The new noble thane of Cawdor Lady Macbeth. Go, sir. Continue thy heavy task. My lady. Duncan hath fallen. My strange visitors spoke true. If they hath used such words that once are good, then may not their claim of my husband's valour also be true. For one king is replaced by another, who may also himself be replaced by another. Macduff by now should know my meaning and intent. Make thy way, my husband, and find such friends as thou shalt have. Then on thy return, make good the words of those spirits of the night. On my honour, I wish to speak to she that is the lady of the house. I am she, sir. What business doth thy have with me? A letter from the Thane of Ross, so please you. Give it to me, I shall take it. You may withdraw. My lady. Noble lady, the news I send to thee follows hard upon the message thou may have already received from those of the royal court. Duncan hath joined his gracious ancestors, and Macbeth hath ascended to the throne. Thy husband has also left, hard upon the news and the growing fear that now doth spread across the land. For our righteous captain Banquo, who fought most valiantly in the recent war, hath been found but in a ditch with many wounds about his person. Our new king, distressed at Banquo's absence, grew into a rage, unseen before that hour by his royal friends. Only the queen, with gentle and soothing words, could calm him. When thou hast read all that is imparted here, destroy these words. Tell me, rely on me. Sir Richard, I see that thou hast remembered the secret passageways of this castle. Dost thou now fear to use the entrance that all may see, now that thou usest the private one that the world does not? When my audience was the world, I could rely upon thy porter to be my voice and inform all that would listen that I had but visited. But. My speech, as often in my state, must not be spoken too loudly. The unseen is so frequently unheard. So careful, Sir Richard, even now. Upon my life, which I intend to keep as long as the heavens and prudence will allow, that thy husband has now left the Scottish court. Murder was written upon the faces of men. And he doth flee to England? He does. Remember all we have spoken. Thou must, upon the public hearing of this news, proclaim thy anger at the very learning of it. For Macbeth hath spies in every household, barn, pen, and drinking well. Any variant of your tone may yet the new king's anger bring. Never forget the wronged wife, the deserted host, the abandoned mother. I know my role, good Sir Richard. I shall play it before all those that wish to see me perform such work. 
Now, my co-conspirator, what hath brought thee once again within my walls? Only for the joy that one doth receive when I lay my eyes upon thee. Thou hast had great cause of worry over the recent season, and I, upon the conflict and clash of arms, know thou hast much concern, but all shall soon be over. Thy husband shall do good work, of this I have no doubt. The new king is already a tyrant, and many thanes leave his banners, seeking an honest and more valiant cause to follow. Thy house will play its full part in that crusade. And you, gentle lady, upon my word, already achieved more than you know. For secret wars are never easy. No drum or pipes shall signal to the world all that thou hast done. But thy friends do know. Thou shalt not be forgotten. In the time ahead, when clouds do darken and the way before thee seems unclear, thy friends and partners shall always stand close by. Thou must believe all that I say. This enterprise will rely upon have Sir Richard always been guided by thy wise counsel? Then be guided now. Your new king, upon my honest word, is even now making more that hate him than should love him. Our force, now gathered and prepared, needs only the act of one who is mad and suspicious to begin its march to the royal palace at Dunsinane. That day, gentle lady, is near. Thou must be ready. With the news of our army's approach, Prepare and bring forth this noble, soon-to-be royal house. Do not tarry. Make all preparation that thou canst. Once the head of Macbeth hath lost its body, the throne may not be vacant for long. Thou must be in place before that night has fallen. If thy son doth not upon the royal seat of Scotland place himself, another will, and all will be lost. How shall I know when to prepare for travel? What signal wilt thou send? This, gentle lady, is the signal. Thou must prepare with the rising of the sun. Then thy army is but ready. Armed and prepared, as thou must be. If thou dost speak the truth... Doubt me not, for thy dreams of greatness are almost upon thee. The time of waiting is over. The call to action hath begun, and thou must ready thy household to begin its journey within the day. Can I trust to your resolution in this matter? Art thou resolved? Petty womanish fear and trepidation kept away beneath the surface never to be revealed? Now is the time to show thy courage to any that challenge thee. Show the kingdom why thy house, against any who may question, should rule all that can be seen. Art thou ready? At first light we shall prepare ourselves to travel to Dunsinane, and from there to Scone. Then I shall meet thee there. Tomorrow the whole land will be on the march, and this time of fear shall be over. Lift thy heart. The crown shall soon be thine. Now, thy English friends are coming. They shall be most welcome. How fine their Scottish knights for one from the south, good Sir Richard. I like them well enough, my good Thane of Ross. Is the lady so resolved? She is. But she suspect. From both of our actions upon this coming day, she doth not. Such things do not seem honest. Such things as we do are not. Those that play for power do not by rules play fairly. They smile and perform their parts, presenting to the world one view, while behind the mask they wet their blades and prepare their aim. The lady wishes to advance. I do not blame her. All do hope that they too shall reach a higher station than that which God hath allotted them. Fear thou to betray? The world doth not love thee. Thy death will not the heavens move. 
Only we, ourselves, shall protect and care for all we do, and those that we alone do honour and cherish. No one else.